And if we switch back over to our poly mesh sphere that we made, if you want to make a new one, just grab a sphere, drag it out on your canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. So you can see if we go into our standard brush and we'll take that alpha off, we have our Z add on, we have sculptures plus mode turned on and we're able to use it no problem. However, if we undo that and we hit control D or we hit subdivide, now we have subdivision history and we try to do the same thing. It's gonna say it's composed of multiple subdivision levels and we're not able to use sculptures plus mode. So what you can do is you can hit delete lower and now turn sculptures plus mode back on and now you're able to use it just fine. Speaking of the primitive that we were using earlier, we went over this before, but just to reiterate, you can grab any primitive. Let's grab a primitive cylinder here. And because it's a primitive, we know we can go down here to initialize and we can change the taper of the top and the bottom. We can adjust the H and V divides, however we need, the inner radius, all that good stuff. However, even with Sculptors Plus mode turned off, you're not able to sculpt on this. And with Sculptors Plus mode turned on, of course, you still can't sculpt on it. So in order to sculpt on it, you have to go up here to make Poly Mesh 3D, and then you're able to sculpt on it just fine. Any curve brushes, if you go B, C, Curve Tube, for example, Sculptors Plus mode is grayed out. You're adding geometry here, so you're not really, you know, you, I wouldn't really expect dynamic tessellation to happen on these individual objects. However, once you're done making them, and you control drag to unmask, and you switch back to standard brush, you can sculpt on these objects no problem, and dynamically tessellate them as well. Now they're still separate objects, so if I go in here and I hold down shift and smooth, it's gonna keep them as separate objects here. So I can always isolate them, hold down control shift and just isolate this one polygroup here, or this one here. And when we get to the deformers, like the union deformer, we'll have a few more options in this kind of scenario. But things like insert mesh brushes, curve brushes, etc. Don't expect any dynamic tessellation with those objects. Also another thing to keep in mind, let's go ahead and load up another example subtool here. If you've ever been to my live streams, you'll probably recognize this guy. We've been playing with him for a little while. So if I grab his face here and I go down to UV map, or I go down here to texture map and we do create new from UV check. You're going to see we have UVs on here. We can see them on our mesh. So we have UVs. We have a texture map that we can bake from them. But even if we go to here to delete lower, we still have UVs. You can see under the UV map, we have delete UV available to us. However, if I hold down shift and we have sculptures plus mode turned on, and we'll go ahead and turn off colorize for this object, you're going to see we can go ahead and tessellate or tessimate this object as we're doing, we're removing geometry detail from here. So we can use Sculptures Plus mode to go ahead and do whatever we'd like to this character. However, when we go down to our UVs, you're gonna see we no longer have any UVs. UVs require vertices and generally speaking, vertices that don't really change. So as we're going through this object and we're really changing these vertices quite a bit, it's not going to update your UVs with this new geometry on the fly. That would be a very, very intensive process. So it goes ahead and if you're using Sculptures Plus, it deletes your UVs. Now, because you're changing the vertices so drastically, I would expect that to kind of be obvious, but just in case you're not aware, it will delete your UVs anytime you use Sculptures Plus mode. Now, what you can do is you can save Let's go ahead and drag this down. So we have this object with UVs and we have subdivision history. What we can do is we can duplicate this head off. Let's go ahead and hold down shift and turn off the colorize on both of these. So we're just sculpting here. So we have one version with UVs and then one version that we're gonna destroy the UVs because we got Sculptors Plus mode. So we're gonna go in here and you know what? Let's do this again. I'm gonna delete this head. So we've got our original head here. Let's say we have UVs, but it's maybe a pretty low density mesh and I wanna sculpt in details, but I don't wanna increase the resolution of my object or change my UV. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit delete higher. We're gonna go down here, we're gonna do texture, new from UV check. You're gonna see we still have UVs, so we're good. We'll turn that texture off. Go back up to our head. We'll duplicate this head off. We'll go ahead and delete lower so it has no subdivision history. And now we can go through here and we can sculpt in all the detail that we want. So I'm gonna go up here to stroke, lazy mouse, turn up that lazy radius a bit. We can go through here and we can sculpt very, very fine details that are gonna be tessellated on the fly. Maybe switch over to Damien's standard brush. We can just carve in some wrinkles here. So now that I'm done adding that detail, I can go back to my original object. I'm gonna hold down shift, turn off that eyeball, which is essentially gonna turn off all of my subtools here. 
I'm going to touch the nameplate to turn that eyeball back on, and then go down here to our one with the detail, touch the nameplate again, that'll turn that eyeball on. So now with both of these visible, let's go ahead and turn off solo, what I can now do is take my one with the UVs, as we can see down here as we scroll down, we have UVs on this one, because we have delete UV available. If we select this one and scroll down, you're going to see our UVs have been deleted because we use Sculptures Plus mode. So now what I can do is I can go to Subtool, Project, we can hit Project All, oops, I'm sorry, select the one with the UVs and then have your detailed ones vis visible, and then go to Project All. If you go into Solo mode, you're going to see we're projecting the wrinkle detail that we had to our, one, to our object with the UVs. So we hit Control D, which will subdivide our geometry one more time, and then hit Project All again. You're going to see we're getting even more of those details, so if we switch between these two with Solo on, here's the one with Sculptures Plus mode with no UVs, here's the one with UVs, with the Sculptures Plus mode details projected. So we can go ahead and delete, select the Sculptures Plus mode one and delete that. Now we have one that has UVs with the Sculptures Plus mode detail on there. So if we go to back down here, you're gonna see we have delete we have delete UVs available, which means we have UVs. And then we can go to create new from UV map. And you can see here's our UVs on this object. I don't know how useful that'll be, but just in case you needed to have Sculptures Plus mode with an object with UVs that you didn't want to change, that's maybe one way you could do it. And one more quick thing I'm going to mention about that. In order to bake in ZBrush, you have to have a an object. If we go down here, turn our texture off. If we go down here, we have subdivision level 1 and then subdivision level 4 with all of our details. So in order to bake in ZBrush, you can't have an arbitrary mesh. They have to be, your detailed mesh has to be the same as your low resolution mesh. However, what you can do is like what we did before, you can export this one, this low res mesh as your object with UVs, and then you can use another baking program to arbitrarily bake the sculptures mesh that doesn't have UVs with details on it. That's another option available to you.